Game on. Hey there, game gurus. Welcome back to the channel. Doing another video, and this one's on my arcade. Now, one of the games I always loved growing up was Pole Position. I remember going into my local arcade. Uh, first time I saw it, it was by Atari. Uh, it's actually a Namco game, but Atari had the license for it. And there were just lines, lines getting into this machine to play this stand-up game, Pole Position. Uh, you had a steering wheel, you had a gear shifter, you had the gas pedal, brake, and it was an indie car driving game. And it was just something about it. it was just really, really good. Now, there's been a lot of home ports of it. Uh, probably the biggest one I remember was on my Atari 7800, which now the big talks about the Atari 7800 Plus. But there was a packing game. Pole Position 2 came with the Atari 7800, and it was a pretty, pretty good port. And then, of course, the 2600, and all different systems had it. But more recently, uh, the uh, Super Impulse came out with one of their tiny arcade pole positions. It was a recreated ROM. It wasn't the arcade game, but it was a recreated ROM. It had a little steering wheel on it that was fake. It was really just a joystick. But for what it was, it wasn't too bad. So another one that was made a few years ago, my friend Bruce Yeager, he actually took one of the Jack Pacific, I think it was Miss Pac-Man. had Miss Pac-Man, Dig Dug, uh, Mappy, Bosconian, uh, Galaxian, Galaga, and there was pole position on it. But what was interesting about it was it was a joystick, obviously, game, but it did have a twisting motion with like a spring that would recenter. So you could actually do a, a driving game. It had pole position on there. And he actually recreated a small mini arcade using that. And I'll post links down below to my review of the Super Impulse pole position and the custom made pole position by Bruce Yeager that he made for me down below. They're both really good things in my collection. But back to my arcade. Uh, I have, you can see, pretty much all the, not all, but almost all the my arcades. Of course, they're in bags. Why would they not be? It's, it's me. Uh, but then they came out with their new pole position. I was intrigued because I was hoping they were going to do it right by actually making a, uh, well, a spinner versus just using it with a joystick. And I ordered mine this time on uh, Amazon. Uh, a lot of times I've gotten them uh, in store, but I don't find them anymore in Walmarts. And uh, a lot of my friends got them on eBay, and they got this really quickly. I ordered mine on Amazon, and it took forever. And not only did it take forever, they packed it in a soft package, and this is how it arrived. Nice! You know, Glenn's not keeping this one, and he didn't. I ordered myself a replacement, because no way I'm going to have this. This is ridiculous. And I told them, when you ship these things, put them in a hard box. Why are you going to put these in a soft package? Look at this. In any case, for purposes of the review, there's already been plenty of reviews on the packaging and... Um, this package is not going to really go far for it. I will say they have a nice magnet in the back that opened up that let you see some things about it. But the packaging, they normally do a really nice job. Uh, obviously, this is not their fault. This was Amazon packaging in a soft pack, and it got obliterated in shipping. But let's get this out of the box. That was easy. And we can take a look at the unit. Okay, obviously, we can't do anything about the, uh, the box because that's ruined. So there's plenty of reviews on that. But the unit itself is perfectly fine. And it's the basic design language of all the other My Arcades, which is fine. But obviously they did make some differences, and it's just how well it works. So we do have a steering wheel here, because it's a driving game, and it is a potentiometer, which is nice. And it feels pretty good. It's not loose. There's a little resistance, but not too much, where it feels like it would interfere with the game, but enough to feel like it's while you're driving a car. So that feels pretty good. Um, they put a notch up here, so you always know where the top is, which is fine. There is a gear switcher here for low. And high, the switch itself feels fine, but the knob is loose as heck. Like, I can probably just I feel like it'll come right off. It's, so it's not like glued on. It's just stuck on, but it spins. That might get a drop of Loctite on it. But the actual up and down feels fine. We have a brake. And look, they put a GRS button on here. Just kidding. It's gas. G-A-S. Gas. But it looks like an R. G-R-S. I'll take it as GRS. So we have basically two buttons here for that. Down below, we have a couple of buttons here. We have our home button, which will exit you out from the game, because there's two games on here. There's Pole Position and Pole Position 2. There is the coin door. Uh, it lights up. Once again, these two red lights will light up when it's turned on. We have our credit to put in your coins, because this is a, a uh, emulated. It's actually the arcade ROMs being emulated, which is kind of nice. And then your start. And, of course, we have the marquee up here. I don't know if that lights up. We have our screen area. I'm going to peel this off. That's what the game looks like. Let's peel that off. 
And we have our screen right here, My Arcade. And it looks nice in the white. It does. And of course we have the artwork on the side, pole position here. All the way down to the logo that was on the arcade. And in the back, more the same for the most part as all the other units. We have our uh, volume up, which is a plus. Volume down, this is a minus. On off. It will take four batteries. They recommend alkaline batteries, and it's got the little screw in here that drives me nuts. But I'm going to use this. It has USB-C. I have power here. I'll use that. Headphone jack. And down here, there's actually a backlight button, which I thought was kind of neat. So by pressing this, it'll change the brightness of the screen. So if you're playing in a dark room, it doesn't have to be obviously as bright. And I'm looking from the back, and I see that the, the uh, sticker here is actually coming off a little bit in the corner. I don't know if you can see that. Good thing this one's going back. <laughs> Suckers. On the bottom, they have their typical uh, rubber uh, feet, which is good. And of course, the artwork on this side. So the feeling, these always felt solid. You know, the artwork was done really well. Feels like it would take some good abuse. It's got a good shine to it. The, the artwork always did feel good. The machine feels solid enough. Doesn't feel super strong. With no batteries in it, there's not a lot of weight. But I think when it's down here and you're playing the game and, and driving, it doesn't move. So if I'm pressing the gas right now, it's not moving. Press and brake. So it looks like I can probably play it with one hand here for my steering, a finger for the high, low, brake, and gas. I think this could be how I play it. And it doesn't move, which is pretty good. So all I'm going to do right now is I'm going to attach some power to the back of this machine. I do have some nice USB-C cables back here for power. So I'm going to plug that in right back here, as you can see. Voila. And we'll turn this thing on back here, just like so. We get our loading. And you can see we have pole position, which is on right now, pole position two. Now if I go back here to this little backlight button, I'm gonna press this backlight button. Let's see what it does. Got a little bit brighter, brighter. I don't know if it comes up on the camera, but there's definitely, now it's darker. So it does have different settings on here. I'll move a little bit closer. I don't know how well it comes across on the camera. Maybe I put it on an angle. You can see there it got darker. And it gets a little bit brighter each time it's pressed. So I'm gonna put on the brightest setting for right now. And I'm gonna make sure the volume's up all the way as well. So if I press the plus, you can see the green line goes for the volume up and volume down. You can see that at the bottom of the screen. Go back to volume up. I'll put it on almost max, not quite max. And we'll put it down like this. So I'm going to try the pole position game, the original version of pole position. I'll try and stand as best I can behind the camera here. And I'm going to, like I said, one hand for steering, and I'm going to hold it like this. So the first thing I'm going to do, I assume pressing gas will get me in the game, and it did. The volume was okay, maybe we'll go up to 100%. There we go. So you can see it did ask for a credit, and it goes through, this is what you would normally see in the arcade. You'd hear that little tone to kind of get your attention, the track mode, and it plays a version of the game. And again, the first time I played it was from Atari. Um, they did not have any branding on it, because I would say it right up here. It would say Atari, and there's nothing there at all, so they couldn't obviously get that on there. But again, this game was originally designed by Namco. It wasn't even Atari. But I'm going to put a coin in. And I'm in low gear, and here we go. Steering feels pretty good. Oh, I got a shift. Duh. I have to admit, I got fifth place, and the steering actually felt pretty good. I actually forgot to shift back to low. Fifth place.
It feels really good playing a game. Oh, of course I crashed. Back to low. It, it feels good to play a game that actually uses the right controls. You know how I am about that. And my arcade, I gotta take my hat off. The steering and the potentiometer feels pretty good. Of course, I'm doing this in a weird position here. I'm gonna crash. Ooh, almost did. Not bad. Oh, I got my name in here. I put that in. Oh, it didn't take that G. There we go. Oh, you see, the steering wheel is kind of weird there. It's, it was going between the two letters. I couldn't get it right. So there's a little sensitivity thing here. Now I got it backwards. <laughs> so the steering for, the, for putting the letters in, it's a little more hard to do, but overall, the steering felt great. Now I'm gonna back out of this, and I'm gonna assume I press this button here, takes you back, and we'll pick pole position two. So you can turn it down, you pick the other game, go back to the first game, go back to pole position two, press the GRS, I'm sorry, G-A-S, gas. But I'll say, still say GRS. Press that over here, center of our wheel, and this is exactly what you would see in the arcade game when you're turning it on. And right now it's saying it's in high, I'm going to put it now into low. It tells you on the screen over here, because it's, it's being done through emulation, so you'll see that as well as you can see it on the stick. And again, so far everything feels good except for the shifting knob. It's just so loose up here, um, which is kind of a shame. Everything else feels pretty good. But we're going to put our coin in. And it says one credit, and we'll pick our track. Just to be fun, I'm going to pick uh, the test track, just to make it easier on myself, because I'm behind the camera. And step on the gas pedal. Or oh, I press select, maybe? There we go. And I'm going to say the volume sounds pretty good to me here, but it's still not the loudest. The car definitely reacts very well to steering. Of course, it's... Oh! <laughs> your touch has to be a certain way, and you'll get used to it, but definitely working behind a camcorder is not going to help. <laughs> oh! Wow! Totally my bad. And using the, the controls this way is also not too bad. The machine doesn't move. Those little feet hold it very well. Oh, my lord. Not bad at all. Let me get my final thoughts on this one. So what's my final thoughts on the My Arcade pole position? Well, I have to say, generally, I've always liked My Arcade products. Like I said, the artwork has always been pretty good. Uh, it's good quality. The machines have been decent quality as well. And most of these games are emulated, or the, even when they recreated them, were done pretty well. This is actually an arcade ROM of pole position one and pole position two. 
Uh, they have a potentiometer here for the steering, which actually feels pretty good. I mean, you gotta feel it for yourself. But it's got just enough resistance where you feel like you are driving a car like on the tires on the street. There's a little resistance there. The uh, gas and brake pedals work well, and it, it's surprising how you can use it because the machine doesn't move, and that's key. These little rubber feet work really well holding it to the surface, so you can use a hand and press everything here and work well. If I was going to really critique anything, the shifter itself is fine. The clicking up and down feels fine. But the actual device, this little piece of plastic on there, is just loose and feels flimsy. I wish it was glued on or made tighter. That's the biggest thing there. It's even a little wiggly on there. Um, the buttons all feel good. And it's hard to see, but these do light up down here, these uh, two little coin doors. Uh, the machine is just, I think, built pretty good. Now, I got this for $49 on Amazon. I don't know how much I'd recommend that because they shipped it in a soft bag, which destroyed the, the box that it came in. Uh, everyone who got this off of eBay seemed to have done a better job, but maybe find it in a store. But uh, I do collect these. No, there's no question about that. I collect them. They go in their bags, um, but I, I enjoy it. I'm going to sit down and play this one some more. If the only really critique I can give is the shifting knob is just not that good. And the volume, for me, sounds good. You may find you wish it goes a little higher, but for me, uh, it sounded fine. I'm not the best with hearing either. But it looks really nice. So my arcade, well done. I wish other companies would take a cue from this and just put a little more effort in like my arcade did here to make a better product. If this was basically uh, turning it, but it was just like a joystick, I would have flipped out. I, I, no. But they did it right. They took the time and did it right. That's it for this video. Uh, if you did like it, please give it a thumbs up. It takes one second for you, but it really means a lot to me in YouTube algorithms helping me promote my channel. And I would appreciate it. And if you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. Uh, not only do I do reviews, I have a product line and I have a lot of new things coming out in 2025 that you may be interested in. And you'll miss out if you're not subscribed to the channel. But to all my 12,000 people who have subscribed, I thank you so much. Over 12 years, 12,000 subscribers. I really appreciate each and every one of you. Um, but that's it. But as fun as this game is, and it is fun, it doesn't take the presence of a family and friends. Always tell family and friends that you love them. Tomorrow is never promised. But in between those times, put a credit in, start it up, turn up the volume, and game on. Need some volume. Put my track.
Now you're looking for that arcade experience at home, but you don't have the space for a full-size arcade in your house or endless funds, then you need the GRS Build-A-Cade. It's arcade quality without the arcade price from someone you can trust. The GRS Build-A-Cade is very simple and easy to assemble one six scale arcade computer you can build yourself. You can buy interchangeable controllers for every gaming option you need to play the games the way they're meant to be played. You can also design your own artwork or purchase artwork separately to make your GRS build a -Cade look like the machine of your dreams. The GRS build a -Cade is also the only home system STEM certified. Come see what all the YouTube creators are raving about. GRS build a -Cade. I just love talking to the vendors because we're supporting real people here. You know, these are people's passion projects. These are people's companies. These are the things that we pour our life into to share with others. Um, so it's really beautiful to see. It's really beautiful to see. And one thing that I really want to show you over here, let's take a look at these mini cabs. Because last night I was playing them. I was blown away. These cabinets are amazing. I have got to show you my favorite one, which is right here, Robotron. This one is incredible. Although I love NBA Jam, I love Mortal Kombat, Don Kong Jr., Arkanoid, this is fun with the paddle. All of these buttons work. So you actually press the button to put the coin in, and then you press start. I'm telling you, this is like the authentic mini experience. So, and then the game starts up, and then you play. Look at this. And then you can customize this. There's so many amazing things that you can customize with this. And there's like stuff on the back. You can it, put a controller. It comes with a racing wheel. There's the, ro the roller ball attachment. You've even got mini guns. Like if you're playing a light gun game. I mean, it's got it all. It's got it all. It's really incredible. This is a really amazing machine. Hey, does anybody want to chat for a second about these amazing machines here? I mean, it's totally cool. I could try and get my dad here. I just texted him. Yeah, you just texted him? We'll come back. We'll come back. But it's an am Actually, if you... So, if you look at the back of the badge, they're on the back of the badge. So yeah, do, can you tell us a little bit about your booth or the name of your company? So we're here uh, with Glenn's Retro Show. Okay. Um, we make um, new controllers for older games. New controllers for older games. That's awesome. I love it. I love it. And I really, really love all of these arcades here. I got to say Star Trek is also one of my favorites too. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for your time.